Hello YouTube, how is everyone doing? It's Professional here. Welcome back to my playthrough of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. So we're gonna continue from where we left off. So Shamspear was found guilty in the last part. Miss Green was also sentenced to prison. We finished up case two. Now we're moving on to case three. Let's see what's in store for us. The return of the great departed soul. I wonder what that's about. We're gonna see what this case is gonna be about. Moving on to our third case now. The Great Departed Soul. The grand end of the century great exhibition of London. Surely there is not a soul who has failed to hear of it. Wondrous new works of culture and industry from every corner of the globe had converged on Hyde Park. Welcoming over 50 million visitors. The last great hurrah of this century. Astonished and delighted people of all nations and ended on a note of resounding success. But as regards to the terrible catastrophe that occurred during the festivities, very few were aware my friend Mr. Herlock Sholmes had a hand in unraveling the matter. For from the shadows, it was he who earnestly unearthed the facts of the case. So it's gonna be a murder. And like the centerpiece Is that a fire? of the exhibition, which rose high into the skies of Hyde Park. Jones's brilliant deductions, as clear and lofty as the Crystal Tower itself, brought the truth to light. Hmm. Wonder what's gonna be happening here. We're here at the showground of the Great Exhibition, which is absolutely packed with people. The weather is unusually fine, and we're about to witness a most extraordinary scientific experiment. Ladies and gentlemen, the 20th century will see steam engines and electrical power dominate the world! So this was, you know, during the Industrial Revolution again, you know, the later stages of the Industrial Revolution, and so a lot of new technology was coming out at this time period, and so inventors were trying to become, you know, very successful, trying to come up with all the latest things, um, you know, all these crazy inventions that people were coming up with. Some were successful, some were total failures. Horse-drawn carts will give way to the motor car! Ships will sprout wings and take to the skies! And today, we showcase even more advanced technology. A glimpse into the future. A world first. A demonstration of my super high voltage instantaneous kinesis machine. Kinesis machine? Is that something to like pick things up with? A man will literally be disassembled by a pulse of high voltage electricity and beamed to another location. I got a bad feeling about that. On, his body will be reassembled by a series of complex calculations exactly as it was before. Who is this guy? In but a few moments from now. Gentlemen will, in the blink of an eye, complete an incredible journey through the air! To arrive an instant later on the Crystal Tower behind you! <laughs> this one, this one. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> And what just happened? It's probably gonna be another murder. 22nd October, 9.36 a.m. So this is, you know, you know, this is what, eight months later now, um, uh, after that last incident. Um, so Suzato's gone again, remember. Um, uh, she's back in Japan. Shones is sweet. Runo, Runo, are you listening? Oh, sorry. Um, what was that, Iris? Hmm, what's the matter with you? You've been miles away all morning. Didn't you like what I cooked for breakfast? No, no, that's not it at all. 
Um, what were we talking about again? Today's paper, it's full of news about the Great Exhibition again. Ah uh, yes, the Great Exhibition. I'd like to go sometime. You're really not uh, your usual self today. You seem very down. Don't you agree, Hurley? Hmm. Did you say something, Iris? Well, he's down too. Oh gosh, you're even more down. When did you arrive, Mr. Narahoto? I've been here for about half an hour already. We had breakfast together. What? Why didn't you mention it before? I, um, thought you might have known I was here. You know, because... Breakfast? Hmm, Iris is quite right. You're clearly lacking in vim. So much so that I didn't notice your presence. Thanks. Of course, I could deduce the reason perfectly well with some simple observations. What? Let's see. Yes, for example, your tussled hair this morning with all its unruly spikes. Clearly it can be deduced therefore that... Um, let me stop you there, Mr. Sholmes, because I think I can see where this is going. My hair always looks like this. It always has. Ever since we first met, in fact. Oh really? How interesting. It just doesn't look like a haircut as such, I suppose. Okay. Thanks again. It crossed my mind recently, that it's been six months now. Six months? Since I was forbidden from working in court. Right, because remember, um, uh, we, um, uh, the judge took it away from us, so I've been wondering how much longer I'm gonna be banned. Oh. Well, that would explain why you seem rather glum. Don't you agree, Hurley? Hmm. Did you say something? <laughs> He's doing it again, Iris. Ah, uh, back to moping. What's the matter with Mr. Sholmes today? He seems even more down in the dumps than me. I know, and the Grey Exhibition is open. You'd think he'd be excited. Oh, why don't we all go see it together? I want to, of course I do. But I can't, not for the time being. Why not? Why not? Why not? Because I'm a great detective after all. So you're embroiled in some trick, tricky case that you can't be distracted from, is that it? I don't remember hearing that you're working on a case, Hurley. I suppose I should try to find out what's going on. Evan, six months ago. Half a year ago now, I took on the defense of a young girl in the trial heard at the Old Bailey. That was Gina, when it first seemed like a simple case of murder that took place at a London pawnbrokery. It turned out to be one part of a much more far-reaching plot that involved the British government. During the course of the trial, it was found that I made an unavoidable, yet at the same time, unforgivable mistake. Words fail me. This situation is utterly deplorable. Mr. Narahoto. Yes, my lord. I will decide upon your fate following the conclusion of th this trial. Of course, my lord. In the end, I had my right to represent people in court revoked. I was told I had to spend my time in research and study, so that's what I've been doing. You have, haven't you, Runo? Reading all those big fat tomes about British law up in your room, and the notes about Sholmes' old cases. Brewing Iris' special blends of tea, fetching my daily bread for me. You've become something of a manservant around here. Start on the silverware next, Mr. Master Narahoto. Well, I'm thinking of going to ask the powers that be to reconsider. Specifically, Long Lord Strongheart of the British Supreme Court on Whitehall. Lord Strongheart. Ah, the delightful Lord Chief Justice. Not my favorite fellow. He's not mine either, but he's the man I have to talk to. He's the only one who can grant permission for me to start working in the courts again. I came to Britain to become the best lawyer I could. And I can't do that just sitting around here. The Great Exhibition The whole of London has been swept up in this Great Exhibition, hasn't it? 
the most advanced science, the most modern technology, the finest works of art, and feats of engineering. For the next six months, our capital will be showcasing these things, and the world will be watching. Oh, do you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to, uh, to look down on London from one of those lovely balloons. Look down on? Do you mean those things? Fly? Yes, of course. They fly high in the sky and don't even need wings to do it. All you need is hot air. But how? How does hot air have anything to do with flying? It makes no sense. I can't understand it at all. That's true of a lot of new scientific discoveries. Most people can't understand them at first. But in a hundred years' time, all these things will just be common knowledge. I suppose they might be. Mind you, some of those science uh, being, demonstra uh, being demonstrated seems very questionable. And, um, you know, it's a hundred years later, um, uh, now, and, um, way more than a hundred years, because this is, you know, the 1880s when this happened, I don't fully understand how a hot air balloon works. I know that a little bit of it, you know, they have that, um, torch that kind of, you know, blows in the middle, um, you know, puts hot air in the balloon and that causes it to go up, but, um, you know, I don't fully understand how a balloon works, a hot air balloon at least, in my opinion. Um, mind you, some of the science being demonstrated seems very questionable. Something went wrong on the open experimentation stage yesterday, apparently. There was a huge explosion. What? Still, I wish I'd seen it, though. I'd love to see how bad some of these scam uh, experiments really are. Says the innocent ten-year-old girl. See here, every page of this paper carries some article or, or other about the great exhibition. But the brighter things shine, the darker the shadows that are cast behind them. Personally, I find myself drawn to the darkness, to the impenetrable. That is my proper atmosphere. A newspaper containing various articles about the world leading science and technology on show at the Great Exhibition being held in London. Shadow cast behind. Is that a metaphorical way of referring to the back page of the paper? Every article on the front page is news about the Great Exhibition. Public experiments that demonstrate brand new scientific ideas, cultural experiments from around the globe. It, it's also positive and hopeful about the coming century. We must all go see it properly before too long. What's this? So many glowing reports about the Great Exhibition. The Reaper attacked, um, and every and everything that's going on there, other than this rather gloomy-looking one. That is. Wait, what? What's the matter, Runo? The Reaper attacked. That's that's Lord Van Zeeks. This must be what Mr. Sholmes was talking about. Does he know any more, I wonder? The prosecutor's been attacked. Your gloomy mood. Are you investigating a particularly tricky case the moment, Mr. Sholmes? Hmm, you could say that, I suppose. Nothing more to add? That's not like you. What sort of case is it? Quiet, Mr. Naruhoto. We must not discuss it here. You never know who might be listening. Who? You're acting very strangely, Hurley. What do you mean, Iris? Well, usually... The more mysterious and complicated the case is, the better Hurley's mood. Ah. It, is it really a case that's bothering you? Iris, please. You mustn't exercise your astute powers of observation and deduction on me without invitation. Remember what I always say. Put yourself in the shoes of an individual about whom you're making deductions. You say that, do you? You, Mr. Sholmes? Never mind. If once I've had a cup of tea, I must make my way at once to the crime scene. Ha. Ah, that was a deep sigh. The Reaper attacked. I want to hear this. It says in the paper that Lord Van Zeeks was attacked. That's terrible. You know the legend of the Reaper of the Bailey, of course, don't you? Only too well, in fact. Yes, Prosecutor Barrick of Van Zeeks. They say that if the Reaper is the prosecutor in a case, there is no salvation for whoever's in the dock. Even if the defendant is found not guilty. Once the Reaper has someone in his sights, one way or another, that person's time left on this earth will be short. 
London's finest rogues always find ways around the law. They'll stop at nothing to secure an acquittal at trial. Falsifying evidence, paying sham witnesses, threatening jurors, bribing judges. But even such devious tactics as these cannot save them from the hand of the Reaper. As you've experienced yourself, haven't you, Mr. Naruhoto? Yes, I've seen the Reaper's retribution at work. Many of these criminal rogues are reckless and quite unafraid to die. If a leader among their fr uh, fraternity is seen to have been taken by the Reaper, retaliation like this does occur. Really, the capital has never ending supply of such scoundrels. So, do you mean Lord Van Zeeks has been attacked like this before? This isn't the first time? He's quite an accomplished combatant, you know. He doesn't take these attacks lying down. Although, it seems that his assailants were armed with guns this time. Oh my goodness, is is he alright then? Is Lord Van Zeeks hurt? My dear fellow, how on earth would I know? Well, in the article here it says, As to what of Lord Van Zeeks and his condition, all will be revealed in tomorrow's morning edition. Ah, I see. Well, we shall have to be patient then. No, 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 I can't wait until tomorrow. In that case, you shall have to inquire with somebody in the know. But who? Lord Strongheart, perhaps. Well, I must be leaving now. Yes, understood. See you later, Mr. Sholmes. Ha, ah, you really are a shameless liar sometimes, my dear fellow. What? You seek to put me off my guard and follow me, don't you? Well, you would be wasting your time. The thought hadn't crossed my mind, but now I'm wondering where you're going. Well then, see you later indeed. Listen to him, he's still laughing on his way out of the door. What is she wearing? Alright then, Runo, let's get going. Oh, um, Iris, what are you wearing? I've got chains to go to the Great Exhibition. You're going to take me. What? But, but I was just about to go to the Supreme Court. Oh, well that sounds fun too. You're going to take me there then, uh... Alright, fine. But just lower that weapon, would you? Of course, and after the Supreme Court, then we'll go to the Great Exhibition. Okay, I guess there's nothing really for us to check here. Um, anything up here? 22nd October. Narahodo's um, legal uh, consultancy. Okay, I know what to do. Let's go see Long St Lord Strongheart. We haven't seen him in some time. Twenty-second October, British Supreme Court, Lord uh, Chief Justice's office. It's been about six months now since I was last here, but some things never change, like the sense of for uh, bo bo boating I always seem to feel in this place. What is she doing? This doesn't seem to be bothering Iris at all, though. She's happily reading over there. Oh, I love this place. I always find so many interesting books here. Of course, I was forgetting that you've been here before. The time we came here six months ago. When Suzato-san was given the news that she was to return to Japan. Ah, I understand you wish to speak with me. Oh, uh, Lord Strongheart, I trust you've been keeping well. Let's see, since you arrived and requested an audience, it's been 4 hours, 32 minutes, and 26 seconds. I've kept you waiting a while. My apologies. Oh no, not at all. I like nothing more than standing around staring into space. Good to know. Good to know that doesn't appear to bother him at all. Male, uh, Mael Strongheart, Lord Chief Justice of London. He's the man who allowed me to start practicing as a defense lawyer when I arrived in Britain as a student. 
You need only savor the air for a moment in this grand office to understand his preeminent status. This is the highest um, uh, judicial guy in, the, in, in Britain. As you will be aware, aware, the Great Exhibition of London is now underway at last. We're extremely busy as a result. Policing the grounds, guarding the new technologies, dealing with petty crime. And furthermore, as of next month, we shall open the International Forensic Science Symposium. Oh, I've not heard about that. Investigating authorities from 40 uh, countries around the globe will be taking part, including from your own land. Forensic science is the future. The world must embrace it. As worthy hosting nation, I have much to do. And it is my highest priority. If others must wait for my attention as a result, so be it. Well, it's nice to know where I stand. So, you wish to consult with me? Of course, I can very well imagine what this is about. Ah, uh, well, um, thank you for agreeing to this meeting, my lord. I want to be allowed to start working as a defense lawyer again in court. That's what brought me here today. But actually, there's something else uh, playing on my mind as it happens. Runo, just take a deep breath and come out with it. Permission to work. I actually came here today to ask for your permission. Go on. Six months ago, my right to work in court as a lawyer was revoked, and I was told to spend my time studying. Obviously, I'm very sorry for what happened, but the thing is, it made me understand what it really means to defend someone under the rules of a foreign justice system, and I desperately want to have another go. Please, permit me to enter the courtroom again. Let's see what he says. Mr. Naruhoto. Yes? Uh... Here it comes. I'm sure you haven't forgotten your position here, have you? At best, you are a substitute for your compatriot. This was uh, never your intended role. Well, that's true. The Japanese government actually sent my best friend on the study tour, not me. It should have been Kazuma. He was so determined to bring change to our own justice system at home. That was his calling. If that tragic accident hadn't happened, I wouldn't be here in this office now. Mr. Asoji was my best friend, you see. That's why I can't leave it unfinished. I have to fulfill his calling for him. Hmm. His calling, you say. Has it never occurred to you that perhaps you know nothing of his true calling? Sorry? The mission with which uh, that young law student was charged, what do you suppose it really was? What what do you mean? Mission? He's not making any sense. He's talking about that, that government uh, note? Never mind. I've read all the reports you've submitted over the past six months. It's clear to me that you regret your actions and have been study, uh, studiously obeying your revised instructions. Do you mean... As of this moment, I reinstate your license to practice law here in Great Britain. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's wonderful news, Runo. In fact, I believe I have the perfect case to uh, mark your comeback. A curious affair. You'll consider it, I hope. Of course. Please tell me more. You described it as a curious affair. Yes, that's right. I believe it was reported in the press. Are you aware that there was a serious accident at the Great Exhibition yesterday? Oh no, um... Yes, I read about it. A professor from Germany tried to carry out a crazy experiment. Let me see. How was it described? Super high voltage instantaneous kines kinesis, I think? Instantaneous kinesis, as in moving things with a click of the fingers? That's right. It's just what my herbal blends need, a dash of devil may care. Whatever this serious accident, um, uh, uh... Whatever this serious accident was exactly, it's clearly captured Iris's I imagination. It's an unfortunate business. A large explosion engulfed the public experimentation stage, and a man lost his life. A certain Mr. Odi Asma, an, an, an investor and a well-known figure in society. A large explosion. A man died. The man responsible for the experiment was Professor Albert uh, Harebrain. He was detained immediately after the incident, and is due to appear in court tomorrow. On the charge of murder, 
Well, it can't really be murder if it was an accident. Um, uh, that's mo that's- at most, that's manslaughter. What? Murder? If you intend to take on his defense, you should hurry to meet with him at the prison. There is very little time left for you to carry out any kind of investigation. The Great Exhibition, a scientific experiment gone wrong, and... Murder. I feel out of, out of death before I've even started, still. But that's not murder, that's manslaughter. We should go to the prison straight away, then, and try to meet with this German professor, don't you think? Definitely. Ah, yes. One more thing about the case. There's a connection with our mutual acquaintance, the Reaper. Oh? With Lord Van Zeeks? How? All sorts of conferences have been taking place around the world to coincide with the Great Exhibition. And next month, the largest and most important of them at all, all will, will take place at last. The International Forensic Science Symposium. It does seem as though criminal investigation needs to embrace scientific methods, doesn't it? Exactly. Ah. Uh, London, the global epicenter of culture, science, and wealth, now has a population exceeding 6 million. Sadly, crime in the capital is growing at a uh, similarly starting, startling rate. So it's imperative that we use the latest scientific methods to investigate and resolve cases as efficiently as possible. Which is what's known as forensic science, isn't it? Exactly. The future of policing. Ha. Huh. Regrettably, however, Britain is currently uh, dragging its feet when it comes to the adaption of forensic methods. Oh dear. That's alarming. Exactly. It's extremely alarming. Ah, well, people are repeating themselves a lot. If I were Her Majesty's Attorney General, you could be sure. The numbers of crimes committed and resolved in London would be very different to the current figures. And I can cite 12 solid arguments and 223 individual reasons to support my claim. Okay, how he just has that at the top of his head. Sorry. By way of apology for keeping you waiting earlier, I shall detail everyone now. What? Oh, how fascinating. I don't want to hear those 200 reasons, please. It all began 15 years ago. I was... Oh man, he's gonna tell us all 200 reasons. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. He, and this is the guy that talks about time. He values his time. And so he's gonna tell us all 200 reasons. Oh my god. Oh my, I like how the game just, just dot 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 dot. That just... <laughs> And that more or less sums up my feelings on the matter in the simplest of, of terms, of course. <laughs> Essentially, to formally establish a forensic investigation division within Scotland Yard. That is my mission. Oh, um, right. Yes. That's wonderful. Exactly. Wonderful is precisely what it will be. Iris isn't paying attention at all. She's got her nose in another book now. Oh, is it over? Did you learn anything useful? I actually drifted off for the most part. He's surprisingly ardent about forensic science. Okay. And he told us that, um... Hang on, present. Let me present this to him. Oh, that reminds me. Have you seen this? That reports of the overwhelming success of the Great Exhibition, of course. No, 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 not that. The story on the back page. What story? The Reaper attacked. Ah, that. You've enjoyed some victories in court against, uh, my number one prosecutor, have you not? Poor Mr. Reaper. What happened to him? He, he wasn't killed, was he? There's no need for concern. Lord Van Zeeks would not be so easily dispatched, I assure you. Can you tell us what happened? I'd really love to know. Very well. If it interests you. It does, strangely. Van Zeeks' condition. Fortunately, Lord Van Zeeks emerged from the attack unscathed. Street ruffians are no match for that man. He's a very capable fighter. But, but that's incredible. They were armed with guns. 
Why was he attacked, though? Did we know? It's related to events that occurred a month ago. A leader of one of the capital's criminal organizations was in indicted and prosecuted by Van Zeeks. But the man was acquitted. I have no doubt large sums of money was involved behind the scenes. Large sums of money. A deplorable situation. Members of the jury were bribed, it seems. However, despite winning his freedom, the man in question met a dramatic end yesterday. But, but you're not suggesting that that was the work of the Reaper, surely? The victim's henchmen certainly seem to think so. He was a man by the name of Asman, uh, Mr. Odie Asman. Did, did you say Asman? That's the man who died in the big explosion at the Great Exhibition. Yes, known publicly as an investor, but in reality, the head of a significant criminal organization. Unbelievable. I wonder, could I ask you something, Lord Strongheart? Try me. Why do you use Lord Van Zeeks as a prosecutor? All the criminals who managed to get off in court then meet with mysterious ends outside the courtroom. And fearful of that fate, they seek to strike at Lord Van Zeeks first. I know there's no evidence that he actually is the Reaper in that sense, but still, something's clearly going on here. I have Van Zeeks work for the prosecution of service for two reasons. Firstly, the man is the best prosecutor in the capital, uh, bar none. And secondly, any deaths of criminals that have occurred outside the courtroom following his trials are nothing to do with him. But that doesn't make sense. How can you explain the way, the, the way so many have died if not by someone's hand? Van Zeeks may have earned himself the moniker of the Reaper, but he is no killer. So he will continue to prosecute on behalf of the criminal. I think so too. I don't think he's responsible for the killings. Unless he wishes otherwise, of course. Hmm. Well, I must be leaving for my next engagement. I'm already 11 hours and 16 minutes late. My colleagues may be starting to fidget. 11 hours late, that's quite something. <laughs> that meeting had already started when I arrived back here for this engagement with you. So lateness was inevitable. Time stops for no man. I'm sure it stopped for me during those two, uh, 12 solid arguments and 223 reasons. <laughs> oh yes, where would I find Lord Van Zeeks now? I would assume he's at his office. Right, I'll go and ask him about the attack in person. I want to get this straight from the horse's mouth. Away with you now. I'm leaving, Professor. Uh, hair, hair brings the fence entirely in your hands. Well, that wasn't very nice. Oh, of course, yes. Thank you very much, my lord. Let's go see Lord Van Zeeks. I'm curious to see what uh, what his office looks like. This is his office? It looks like a castle. Prosecutor's office. Oh, so this is the legendary Reaper's office. Yes, it appears so. Burr, it sends a chill down your spine, doesn't it? What an amazingly deathly atmosphere. Oh, is that... That hooded figure was so still, I hadn't noticed his or her presence. I wonder who it is. What are you doing here? Ah. Lord Van Zeeks. This is the first time that we see him outside of court. He's as unwelcoming as I thought he'd be. Actually, maybe even more so. Oh, I, um, I'm glad to see you're well. I am. So, who's the person over uh, by the wall being punished for something or other? No punishment is taking place here. Oh. That's my apprentice, and he's sitting there of his own free will. I didn't know you had an apprentice. It must be the same person who was pictured in the newspaper. He's very able in combat, a requisite skill for anyone under my tutelage. 
Are you referring to the attack on the Reaper that was reported in the papers? The Reaper. I'd be interested to know the Reaper's true identity myself. Assuming that is such a fabled uh, fiend that genuinely inhabits our great courtrooms. Last night's attack. Lord Strongheart said that the assault last night was some sort of revenge attack? True. Carried out by henchmen of Odi Asman's criminal organization. The investigation meant their arrests were imminent. Presumably some hope to kill me before that happened. Odi Asman... He's always, um, uh, masqueraded as one of London's, um, most powerful financiers, a global investor. But his enormous wealth came to him by underhand means, via his, um, criminal activities. And he used that money to buy himself a verdict of not guilty when he found himself in court, didn't he? Being prosecuted by you, Mr. Reaper. But the man got his, uh, come, uh, comeuppance in the end. Yesterday, in fact, in extraordinary circumstances, it was a most unusual ca uh, cause of death. I, I know about that. It was super high voltage instantaneous kinesis gone wrong. Mr. Asman died when the demonstration on the public experimentation stage ended in an enormous explosion. Correct. And you think I have some kind of divine ability to cause an accident like that to happen, do you? Well, no. That does seem a little far-fetched. If this man really is the fabled Reaper, then he has to be innocent of this particular death, at least. I, it's strange how this uh, has worked out, isn't it, Runo? I mean, what with you taking on the Professor's defense for the trial tomorrow? What? You're going to be defending him? Well, Ira should have said that. Oh yes, that's right. Though I barely know the man's name yet, to be honest. Albert. Albert, uh, Hairbrain. That's right. Do you know him by any chance? Of course. He's a contemporary of mine. We were at university together. You're... What? Your contemporary? I'd understand that Professor Hairbrain was from Germany, though. I I'd understood. Hairbrain's from a respectable British family. After graduating from the University of London, he moved to Germany to carry out research, that's all. So you were students together. I was in the faculty of law, of course, and he in science, so our paths rarely crossed. But curiously, we got along, though I've, I've not met him since my university days. I certainly didn't expect our next encounter to take this form. And with you of all people representing him. Ugh, only if I make it out of this office alive. <laughs> He's actually been charged with murder, it seems. Yes, I know. Because the prosecution will be handled by me. By you? You see, now, this is really unrealistic. You wouldn't... A, a prosecutor would never be assigned to a case that they know the, the person that defended. Never, ever. Even if they know them in a friendly manner or in a negative manner. Like, they don't like them or they like them. They would never be assigned because there is potential for massive bias there. So this is just unrealistic. This would never happen in an actual court. But, you know, it's just for the purposes of the story of Ace Attorney. Um, but, but you made it sound as if you and the professor had been friends. We are friends. It's true. Then why would you do this? If the Reaper is the prosecutor, then there's nothing anyone can do to save him. He's doomed. What's Lord Van Zeek's thinking? What do you mean by what you said before? If you'd like to know the Reaper's true identity, does that mean... I'm a crown prosecutor, and a mortal like any other. I'm no demigod. Well, I thought you were a vampire the way that you acted. But they've all died, haven't they? The people you've prosecuted, I mean. Whether or not the trial ended in a conviction or an acquittal, Those I prosecute are the vilest wretches of our society. People who without question deserve to be found guilty. The world is a better place without them. But... That's not true of Mr. Natsume, for example. He wasn't a vile wretch at all. That is true. Nor was Jenny, in fact. She's ever so hardworking now. 
I can't deny that since I encountered you, things have taken a turn. But the point is this. If any of those vile wretches that escaped justice subsequently died in mysterious circumstances, it was at the hand of their own kind. It's not my work. Lord Strongheart said the same. He believes you're not involved in any way. But you were attacked by those ruffians because they believe it's true. The fact is, since people started to call me the Reaper of the Bailey, the number of serious crimes in the capital has dropped substantially. Oh. It would appear that even the most hardened criminals can be made fearful for their lives. Now, um, do you mean to say... I mean to say that if my per- uh, so If my pseudonym um, serves a useful purpose, I adopt it gladly, and with honor. But it's putting you in danger, you could be killed. If that is my fate, let God decide. Lord Van Zeeks. Now, here's the thing. I wouldn't be surprised if it's his assistant, if his assistant is the one who's, um, or the, the, um, uh, apprentice is the one who's killing people. That's what it might be. He might not be involved at all. It might be the, um, uh, the guy with the mask. Um, present. Lord Van Zeeks, about the article in this paper. Ah, yes. It seems there was a report near, nearby when that little skirmish took place. I had no idea I'd been photographed. Uh, it was uh, careless of me. It looks as though it was taken after the people who attacked you had run away, though. Rest assured, the police have already apprehended every last one of them. But there's someone else fighting alongside you, it seems. And I think it's the same man who's sitting over there um, as we speak, isn't it? As I mentioned already, he's my apprentice. Perhaps you could tell us a little more about him? He's in my tutelage to become a prosecutor. So you could say he's my apprentice, I suppose. Ah, like you are to Hurley then, Runo. I don't remember taking an apprenticeship with a great detective. He's currently compiling a report about last night's attack. It looks like he's wearing some kind of mask? On Lord Strongheart's orders. What? Nobody knows the man's face, or indeed his identity. But why would you agree to take on such a clearly suspicious individual? Lord Strongheart's orders again. He's not one for meaningless fo uh, follies. There will be a good reason for his actions. I hope you're right. Uh, uh. The task is complete? Good. In that case, you can uh, collate all, uh, all the briefs. Nice to meet you. Okay, this is getting creepy. Back to work again. Look at how much wine he has in this in this office. Damn, that's where he gets all his wine from. That was really strange, though. I've never met the man before. I didn't even know he existed, and yet... Somehow, it didn't feel like our first encounter. Don't bother trying to converse with him. He says nothing to anybody from outside his office. It's not like our first encounter. I wonder who that guy could be, then. Lord Strongheart has strictly forbidden it. Oh, I see. Why are you so interested in my apprentice, anyway? Hmm? Oh, no. I mean... Sorry. I, I didn't mean to. The way he stood there so casually, yet with that a flawless po posture. It, it couldn't be. Ah, yes. There's something I've been meaning to ask you. Oh, what's that? That Nipponese man. Is he faring well? Sorry? 
the one arrested twice in succession six months ago, with the st a stoop and the mustache and the jitters. Ah, Mr. Natsume, you mean. I'm not sure he'd been uh, very pleased to find out you identified him from that list, Runo. He's fine, thank you. In fact, I received a letter from him by International Post only the other day. I see. Well, I think we can end our discussion there, don't you? There's little time left before tomorrow's trial. I advise you to spend it in investigating the case. Yes, thank you for the advice, and for the conversation. I can't believe he's asking after Suzaki-san, after a, a Nipponese. I'm not sure whether to feel happy about that or worried. I never imagined that Mr. Reaper would be friends with a mad scientist, did you? That's a turn up for the books. A mad scientist? Ah, you mean Professor Harebrain. Yes, it might be worth quizzing the professor about his relationship with Lord Van Zeeks, I think. Nothing really- can I present him with this? Um, I know you've seen this around my arm before, but what is it exactly? It's the mark of a defense lawyer, in Japan at least. And what's your reason for showing it uh, to a British prosecutor? Oh well, I don't know really. I can understand, at least. There's merit in reminding yourself of who helped you become what you are today. Oh. But that's a personal matter, something you may not want. Uh, uh, you may want to keep close at all times, not something to flaunt. No, I suppose not. Thank you for understanding, though. Oh look, it's a little uh, display of the. Um... Oh look, it's a scale model of the Great Exhibition Showground. That's amazing. I wonder why it's here. Perhaps it made it, uh, he made it to take his mind off the status of being too busy to attend in person. Or perhaps he's too embarrassed to uh, queue up for a ticket. Surely it's obvious that I'm using it as an investigative aid. Ah. You Nipponese have no business uh, painting others as overly reserved. Ah. I really didn't uh, think he'd overheard that. That portrait really do dominates the room, doesn't it? It's a very majestic outfit and pose, but sadly, whoever painted it didn't do a very good job of capturing Lord Van Zeke's facial features. Yes, you're right. I mean, it's not far off, but the artist has exaggerated his subject's ha handsomeness, I think. Ah, uh, that reminds me. I heard Emperor Napoleon of France ordered artists to make him look more attractive when they painted him. How vain. That's really not an attractive quality in a person, is it? That portrait does not depict me. Surely that's immediately obvious. Oh, then who is it? It re really looks like a punishment to me. I've never seen someone sitting like that before. He hasn't moved a muscle since we arrived. Do you think perhaps he's dead? No. If he was dead, Runo, he wouldn't be sitting up, would he? Well, anyway, dead or alive, he's not overly approachable, is he? I don't think he's going to talk to us. He's not dead. <laughs> Look at all those ancient casks um, uh, lining the wall there. Casks in the Reaper's chamber. Or are they caskets? No, that's wine. You, do, you don't think all those people who escaped uh, conviction in court are lying inside them? Dead? Do you? No. What ridiculous notions are going through your head, man? That is my collection of fine vintages. Oh my god. I don't know how they came to that conclusion. That was just... That was just so random. That was just... Oh yes, of course. Thank you for clearing that up. <laughs> Runo and I were just musing to ourselves. Don't mind us, Mr. Reaper. I wouldn't, if you hadn't invited yourselves to my office to talk nonsense with my, within my earshot. 
Oh my god. That was so random. Lord Van Zeek's desk, look. It's so stylish. And that's a marble cro uh, chess uh, set behind it. Chess. That's the western version of our Japanese shogi game, isn't it? You know, I'm actually quite good at shogi problems. Oh, really? You'd probably like the chess problems in that case. I'd love to challenge Lord Van Zeek sometime. To a, a bout of shogi problems. If you only really want to challenge yourself, you can always do that on your own at home. Look at that fine collection of hallowed chalices and bottles neatly lined up there. My hallowed uh, bottles are filled with the essence of the finest grapes from the finest vineyards I visit. And I personally oversee these chalices being made by the finest crystal craftsmen in the world. Well, you're kind of careless with them when you're constantly throwing them. And yet you throw them around in court like they were worthless. <laughs> yep, she just said what I was thinking. Yes, because this imbecile is so unimaginably and repeatedly wide of the mark sometimes. Oh. <laughs> Before you open your mouth, next time you should consider the poor artisans who work, whose work you defile. So, it's my fault? Silly me, how could I ever have thought otherwise? Okay, let's go visit Professor Hairbrain then. Twenty second October, local prison, C cell eleven. The warden said cell eleven. That's this one. Oh, there's someone curled up in a ball in the back corner. Look. What's his name again? Professor Albert, uh, Hairbrain, wasn't it? Um, excuse me. Professor Hairbrain. Who are you? I'm Rina Suke Naruhoto. I'm a defense lawyer. A lawyer? Uh, was it something I said? Uh, a lawyer, you say? What? What? Would you be here uh, uh, about the experiment? Are you going to defend my hypothesis? Your hypothesis? Sorry, I don't... Yesterday's demonstration... That demonstration was... That magnificent demonstration was... It was out... And out success by anyone's calculations. But, 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 despite that... No one listens. No lawyer believes in the science. When it's explained, they all leave it, uh... At high velocity. Yeah, this guy's a bit crazy. Ha. Huh. Now, probably not. Now it's probably not a good time to mention that your zeal made my concentration leave for a while too. Yesterday's uh, demonstration. Um, you mentioned um the demonstration yesterday. The papers have called it a spectacular failure. After all, a man died in the explosion, didn't he? Ah! Yes, you could interpret the results that way if you really wanted to. Well, I, I suppose in the strictest sense, the experiment was a failure, but at the same time, it was a great success. You've lost me. I saw it with my own eyes, right there in front of me. Mr. Asman was spontaneously disassembled. Until then, everything was going exactly as my calculations had predicted. At that point, he should have been beamed to the Crystal Tower by instantaneous kinesis. However, the machine exploded and Mr. Asman in fact perished. Yes, I can't deny that part of the experiment was a failure. So what you're really saying is, the large explosion that killed Mr. Asman was an accident, correct? But the big wigs had you arrested on suspicion of murder. I was responsible for a man's death. That is the uh, immutable truth here, and for that, I wish to be punished at once. But... Murder? Never in a million years. It was an accident. Simply an accident. I see. Hurley and I were talking this morning, you know. 
he said the situation would change completely depending on whether it was treated as an accident or murder. How exactly? Well, if it really was an accident, then the professor's machine would be kept in protective custody. On what grounds? Ah yes, it's newly established here in Britain. The Special Dis Dispensation for Scientific Equipment Act. That one passed me by. Let me guess, if someone dies in an accident, it's not their fault. But if the case is treated as murder, then they'll say my machine was a murder weapon, and they'll be able to uh, pour over it as much as they like. If they examine it in detail, they'll find out how it's made, and then... They'll be able to copy my idea. My precious hypothesis will be stolen. The machine must be protected from that at all costs. That's why it's imperative the whole incident is shown to have been an accident in tomorrow's trial. Uh, I see now. So they're trying to charge him with murder so that they can steal his machine? Instantaneous kinesis. So in short, there was a terrible accident at the Grey Exhibition showground yesterday. Yes. Or rather, no. The devil is in the details, strictly speaking. There was a terrible explosion. Sounds the same to me. You were demonstrating super high voltage instantane instantaneous kinesis, weren't you? How fascinating. Humans, like all matter, are made up of parti particles that are held together by electrical bonds. So it must be possible using a sufficiently high voltage to break those bonds and beam the particles through spaces. That's, that's it in a nutshell. That's my idea, you see. That's my amazing hypothesis. Gosh, that's unimaginably high-level science. Oh, but dare to imagine it. Dare to dream of such incredible technology. Just think one moment I could be here in this cell, and the next I could be at the Great Exhibition again. Well, yes, that would be incredible. And, and the next, in the mere blink of an eye, I could be at a great uh, Parisian theater, say. The possibilities are endless. The whole of our vast planet could be within reach. So no more hiding in wardrobes on rocky seas for 50 days. Hmm. I don't really see it like that. What do you mean, Iris? Well, if you could travel anywhere in the world instantly, the planet would, uh, wouldn't really seem vast anymore, would it? I think it would feel like it had shrunk. My word, that's, that's exactly right. What, what are the implications? What does this mean? Oops, that's got Professor Bunny Brain really worried by the look of it. Clearly, this is yet another case of just because you can doesn't mean you should, I suppose. The point is, my calculations are flawless. The science works. Well, without a practical demonstration, it means nothing. And that's always the fly in the ointment. Because practical demonstrations cost a lot of money. Sorry, guys, just a little tired recording this late at night. Money that young scientists like you don't have. That's... that's exactly it, yes. Hurley's always complaining about it. He says the government should invest more in science. Well, anyway, I bumped into him at the right time. I met the well-known investor, Mr. Asman. The victim who died in yesterday's terrible accident, you mean. I understand Lord Van Zeeks is a friend of yours from your university days. Yes, that's right. He was studying law while I was studying science. What was he like back then? Hmm, a good question. Unassuming, gentle, manly, and all-around nice fellow, really. Sorry, I, I think you misheard me. I'm talking about the cold-hearted, merciless prosecutor, Barrick Van Zeeks. What was he like when he was at university? Talk about a leading question, Runo. As I said, an unassuming and extremely pleasant gentleman. After all, he is the little darling of the Van Zeeks family with all his great aristocratic origins. I, I didn't realize he had quite such a noble blood. Little darling. It was a bit of a shock when I came back to Britain I learned uh, what he'd become. The Reaper of the Bailey, no less. Yes, that's right. I did hear, though, I'm not surprised that Van Zeeks is an aristocrat. The, the, the aristocrats, they were very a very powerful class of people back then. So because you, somebody was rich doesn't mean that they were necessarily an aristocrat, even though most aristocrats were rich. Um, they were basically a privileged class that existed throughout Europe for hundreds of years. They had gotten all these um, uh, 
they would usually get all these, um, uh, government offerings and, you know, um, positions that normal people would not be able to get. So the vast majority of the population in European history are peasants, and peasants um, had it really rough under the aristocrats for centuries. Um, this is the time period where aristocrats started losing their power. Like, during the Industrial Revolution, up until World War I, and after World War I, the aristocrats pretty much lost all their power in Europe for the most part. I did hear, though, that there was a very big event in his life that completely changed him after graduation. Really? What sort of event? Ah... I'm- I'm sorry. But I don't know anymore. I wasn't in the country at the time. I was in Germany already. He's probably talked about that betrayal, because Van Zeke's always talked about that he's been betrayed in the past. I wonder if that's anything to do with Professor Mikotoba. If he's heard all about the Reaper, I really don't have uh, the heart to tell him that Lord Van Zeeks will be the prosecutor in court tomorrow. The full name of the man who died in yesterday's accident was Mr. Uh, Odie Asman, wasn't it? What exactly was your relationship with the man? He first visited me in my laboratory in Germany a year ago now. He said he wanted to invest in my immaculate hypothesis. I thank my lucky stars. I see. So you hadn't really known each other until then. Money for scientific research. I'm so envious. As far as I was concerned, the man was an angel. Oh, really? An archangel, even. He was prepared to fund a practical demonstration of my hypothesis for presentation at the Great Exhibition. And if that went well, I could expect additional financial support for my research from the British government. Mr. Asman provided me with money, an exceptional engineer. He produced a machine to my precise uh, specifications. But then, your dreams were blown to dust in one enormous explosion. As you can see, I owed everything to Mr. Asman. I would never, ever have thought about taking a man's life. Well, he seems genuine enough. I don't think he's lying. So, Professor, let me just make absolutely sure I've understand you, understood you properly. The huge explosion that occurred yesterday, that was an accident, you're saying. You had no intent to harm the victim who was in fact the sole investor in your work, is that correct? As correct as two squared is four, I swear it. Yes, it's true that the man perished in a machine of my invention. So I know that I'm far from blameless in all this, but still. I would never use my discoveries, my inventions, to take a person's life. Not in a centillion years. I'm a man of science, all I know. You have to believe me, please. Do you believe me? Do you believe in my hypothesis? Science is the pursuit of truth, you know. I've always believed that. All my life. I'm afraid I don't know much about science. Or your theories. But I do believe you. And I will fight uh, to prove your innocence with all my might. I'm a man of the law. It's all I know. You have to believe me, please. When I went to live in Germany after I graduated, I learned something very important. Nationality, class, lineage, none of that matters. As long as you try your hardest, you can achieve anything. Thank you for that, Professor. And thank you in advance for defending me tomorrow in court. Alright, Runo. It's time. Time to visit the Great Exhibition. Sorry? Well, that's where the incident happened, isn't it? Yes, I suppose that's true. Time to investigate at last. Okay. Let's move here. Bunny brain, okay. So this is the scene of the crime, 22nd October, the Great Exhibition, grounds a uh, foot of the Crystal Tower. Uh, the sh showgrounds are a little too big for my liking. We've been walking around in dense crowds for two hours now, and I felt myself swooning three times. There are a lot of people, aren't there? I've almost been trodden on three times too. Be careful, won't you, Iris? Don't let go of my hand. 
We finally made it through the throng, though, by the look of it. Here we are, we under- underneath the public experimentation stage, where the explosion a hap happened yesterday. What's that? What's- wow, he just said what I said. I can hear voices from up on the stage. It sounds like an argument. Oh, it's Gina. Right, I've had it with you this time. I'm warning you. I'll arrest you in a minute. Oh yeah, go on then, Spectre. Give it a shot. You ain't got no evidence and you know it. Wait, I know those voices. You've got a cheeky little mouth on you, young lady, but a night in the cells will teach you some manners. Just try it, I dare you. If you want that bag of chips rammed down your throat. Oh, he... He really eats those chips. Yoo-hoo! Gregzy, what are you doing up there? Ah. So Gregson is here, um, and I really don't like him after Case 5. He pissed me off in Case 5. Um, he did some bad things in Case 5, that's, if you didn't watch that one, that's what I'll say about that. Your Ladyship. How are you, Your Ladyship? I do hope you're well. Your ladyship, he just repeated himself. Does that make her three times a lady? I'm not well at all. It's far too busy everywhere. I wanted to ride in a balloon, but there was a three-hour queue. Unbelievable. I'll go have a word for you at once, your ladyship. You'll be flying as high as a kite in no time once I pull some strings for you. Huh. Tobias Gregson, an inspector at Scotland Yard. Until recently, he was suspended from duty, but it would appear he's back in action now. So he was suspended from duty because of that, um, uh, incident in Case 5. I'm surprised he wasn't arrested over it. He's actually quite well known, appearing as he does in The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes. And for that reason, he can't say a word wrong to the stories offer Iris. But there are limits, surely. Or there should be. Watch it, sunshine. Sorry? What gives, then? Don't tell me you're on this case. Yes, I'm acting for the defense. So we're here, to investigate. Hmm. Dear me, that's the situation, is it? Is it really that troubling? Fisk, a merely five bob, is that all you got? You're a lawyer, ain't you? You could stand to carry a bit more copper around in your pockets, Mr. Naro Odo. What? Hey, th that that's my last bit of spending money, that is. You can have it back, but I'll have to charge uh, you for all the bother. Three bob. This is Gino Lestrade, a pickpocket or diver born and bred in the East End of London. In the case that led to my own suspension six months ago, she was the defendant. This is the young girl I was defending in court. That was the pawn shop case. What's your pr uh, problem, eh, Odo? Diver pickpocket. Uh, what's with uh, all the name calling? You want a bag of chips uh, rammed down your throat and all, do ya? I, I thought you were proud to be a diver, Gina. You were just arguing with Inspector Gregson about it, weren't you? I assume you've been up to your usual tricks here at the showground. That ain't no way to talk to a lady, Odo. Uh, half a year's a long time. People can change. I'm an apprentice now, learning to be a Scotland Yard detective. What? So you'll have to call me what everyone else does. It's Inspector Lestrade now. She's a cop? In... Spectre? That badge is homemade, surely. The Inspector part isn't entirely accurate. No one calls her that. For what it's worth, anyway. Investigating is off the cards for all of us. What's that supposed to mean? Right, well, I'll be back up top. You hold the fort down here, alright? Right, sir. And so she's learning to be a detective, but most- but in most places when you want to be a detective, you have to start out as a street cop. Um, uh, that's the thing. Um, uh, so this is kind of weird. She was, you know, convicted for, um, 
breaking and entering like six months ago. She was some time in um uh she was some time in 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 jail for, but she got out. Now she's learning to be a detective. Um, this raised a lot of questions about Gina. It was eight months ago now that I first encountered Gina in connection with a case that I was working on. At the time, she was living in the East End with a group of other orphans. She helped all of them survive at pickpocketing, but then she got embroiled in a murder. I had a lot of time to think in prison. I realized I couldn't go on like I was. The div divin, uh, weren't working out. Oh, I'm so pleased to hear it, Jenny. Well done. So... Um, you went from being a pickpocket to a detective? You got it. Good. In it? Inspector Lestrade. Sounds like something out of a book, eh? And that's a reference to, um, uh, Inspector Lestrade and Sherlock Holmes. Um... Talk about a sea change. And then there's Iris's old man to think about. Iris's father, you mean. Yeah, I promised her, didn't I? I said I'd get all the police forces around the world to pull out, uh, all the stops looking for him. I'm just a small promise then. Nothing serious. Oh, Ginny. You're so sweet. But N Naruhoto knows what happened to, um, uh, Iris' uh, dad. He got- he was murdered by, um, uh, Giselle Brett. So anyways, that's how- how, um, uh, come I had- go at- go at the test for Scotland Yard. Only trouble is, I don't read so well, do I? Just a small problem, nothing serious. And that's when Hurley approached Gregzy and asked for help. So the inspector said he'd take full responsibility for Ginny and made her a sort of apprentice. That was very ma uh, manag magnanimous of Inspector Gregson and Brave. Well, you know, he kind of owes it to her after what he did in Case 5. Well, you know Hurley. He enjoys finding ways to make people do what he wants. The great detective likes digging for dirt, in other words. So, the long and the short of it is, you've got questions about the case. You can ask Inspector Lestrade. Right then, Inspector. Actually, there's still a big mystery surrounding Gina, isn't there? Oh, what, Runo? What? Well, six months ago, Gina was a defendant in a trial prosecuted by the Reaper. A trial in which she was found not guilty, and yet here she is, still. Come on, you're not still on a, a, about that, are you? Legend of the Reaper, whatever it's called. Cor, you don't have worry, Otto. If I didn't have worry, there probably wouldn't be a whole lot of you left. Huh. <laughs> so, um, remember that whoever the Reaper prosecutes, even if they're found not guilty, they're murdered, and so she was never murdered. It's like I told you before, innit? The Reaper's kind of like I'm upstairs, so he, uh, he knows what I'm like on the inside. But I ain't really done nothing wrong. Nothing wrong might be stretching a point. What about Mr. Natsume in Japan? He's perfectly fine, isn't he? Well, that's true. Perhaps the Reaper is more dis uh, discerning than I thought. Exactly. So I ain't worried, I'm totally fine. Yesterday's incident. It was out of this world, it was. The brainy bloke pulled a bunch of levers on his machine, machine and suddenly it started billowing smoke. Then it just went pop. I ain't seen a better explosion here yet. Sorry? You mean, you saw it, Ginny? With your own eyes? Yeah, of course. The boss is in charge here, ain't he? Of keeping everything running smooth, I mean. The boss being Inspector Gregson, I suppose. That's going to take some getting used to. So, all I have to say is that I'm on duty, as I, and I can do whatever I want to. Get this, I was up in one of them flying balloons when it happened, watching it from above. No, you're so lucky, Ginny. Maybe I should join Scotland Yard too. Yeah, do it. You know how to put those, uh, the boss in, in his place already, right, Iris? You have no trouble at all. Then it's settled. When do I start? No, 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 no. You can't join Scotland Yard, Iris. We'll see. Anyway, what I don't understand is this. If the machine exploded so spectacularly, how can Professor Bunnybring still be claiming that his experiment was a success? Oh, right. Well, 
it was a success, in a way. It was? How can it have been? Shortly after the whole machine blew up, no one could have called the experiment a success. It's like I said, it did sort of work. Don't tell me to actually beam the guy over. I mean, yeah, there was a load of smoke and that whopping great bank. But where do you think they found the victim's body, eh? In the crystal tower over there. What? In the tower? You can see for yourself, can't you? Up there above the scaffold. Oh, where are all the glasses broken, you mean? Yeah, the cage what the victim got in, uh, in to start with really did get beamed through the air or whatever and landed all the way over there. So you see, it did kind of work, didn't it? <laughs> what? I, I don't believe it. I mean, I don't get the ins and outs of it, but anything's possible, right? With science. Oh, I tell you what, you can have this. It's a plan of the experiment they drew up at the yard. Are you sure? Yeah, go on. I had three uh, bob off you before, so fair is fair. Yes, I didn't actually give that to you, did I? A diagram showing the relative positions of the crystal tower and Professor Harebrain's machine that exploded. Take a look at this diagram. Hmm. About the investigation. Something Inspector Gregson said before uh, seemed a little strange. For what it's worth anyway, investigating is off the cards for all of us. Yes, no naughty old Gregsy ran off after that without explaining himself. Alright, that. The boss said no one's allowed to investigate that weird machine what blew up yesterday. Well that's not fair, we're representing the defendant. In that case, could you at least tell us what you've learned from your investigations? Nah, you're not getting it. We ain't allowed to investigate neither. Why? What did the boss call him again? The Forensic Investigation Team, I think. Anyway, apart from them lot, no one's uh, allowed to lay a finger on the scene. Bit funny, innit? So even Scotland Yard's when detectives can investigate. Yes, I never heard something like that before. I thought I could have a gander on the quiet, though. But the boss caught me at it. You probably heard or I'm um, given me an earful about it before. From down ear, didn't you? It's not bleeding fair. I think you were giving him as much of an earful back back as I remember it. Yeah, well, something uh sometimes I think it's all them chips what make I'm so stubborn. You say something to me, uh to I'm Odo, go, go on, see if you can't um see if you can get through to him. He's up on the platform above us, is he? where the machine that exploded is. We can try, can't we, Runo? Gregzy will listen to us. This platform must have been set up for the experiment, I suppose. It's very high up. About 30 feet above the ground, apparently. That's what a policeman I just spoke to has said. I don't really understand feet very well. We don't use them in Japan. Oh yeah, sorry. It's about... It's about 9 meters. But uh, soon you'll have been in London a year, Uno. It's time you get used to our measurements. Yes, well... This thing is so tall, the spe spectators at the front would have, um, uh, would have seen a wall, nothing else. They probably thought they'd secured the best spot to watch from, only to be disappointed. There's a saying in Japan, the darkest spot is right under the lighthouse. I feel like it probably applies here. These stairs obviously lead to the stage above. We should go up there and investigate the exact spot where the experiment was being conducted. Twenty-second October. The Great Exhibition uh, Grounds Experimentation Stage. So that's it, is it? The machine that blew up. 
Oh, it must have been a magnificent explosion. I've seen my fair share. You've seen uh, things like this before, you mean? Of course. Um, uh, Hurley's always doing experiments that end in a bang. In fact, in his own words, explosions are the very essence of chemistry. Ah, that might explain the smell of burning that frequently comes uh, wafting up the stairs. One time, he made something that exploded with such force it took the roof off the building. I wish you'd been there to see it, Runo. It's hard to get too excited about that, given that I now live in the roof. Well, anyway, that's enough about that. It's time to investigate. Ah, look, Inspector Gregson is over there. He seems to be deep in thought about something, whilst eyeing up the machine carefully. Really, he just looks confused to me. It ripped itself apart magnificently, didn't it? Magnificently. And mercilessly. So someone stands in the middle of the machine to be disassembled and then beamed through the air. Yes, beamed. Not blasted. That's the point. Yes, that part's crucial, really. Is something like that even possible, though, Iris? Oh, Runo. I'm just a child. How should I know? Well, you know a lot of things. A child when it suits you, you mean. From what I can tell, I think if you were to pull this lever here... Stop! Don't touch that. Aha! Ha, that was pr practically instantaneous kinesis, the way you flew over uh, just now, Gregsy. Please, your ladyship, I didn't mean to startle you, but I can't let you touch anything up here. So sorry, you can have some of my latest special bl blend to make up for it. You shouldn't drink tea that fast. Ah, wonderful. The stuff really is wonderful. It's just like old times, this is. We're presenting Professor Hairbrain in court tomorrow, Inspector, so we should be allowed to examine the scene. Ha, huh, listen, Sunshine, even I'm not allowed to touch anything up, up here. It's all that Blast's special dip this pensation for scientific experiment equipment act to blame. It's driving me potty. Oh yes, that's special dispensation. The professor mentioned that too. More red tape's all we need. I don't know what the government thinks it's playing at sometimes. But we're allowed to just look, aren't we? Hey? Surely that's alright, isn't it, Gregzy? Of course, your ladyship. Anything you say, your ladyship. But please don't get your dainty hands dirty, will you? Don't worry. We wouldn't dream of touching anything, would we, Runo? She really knows how to get what she wants. Government policy. Using high voltage electricity to somehow disassemble a man's body, and then beam him across to the crystal tower. It's an extraordinary thing to attempt, especially in public. True, it was by far the most unusual of the experiments planned for the exhibition, mind. To be honest, I'm a bit surprised it was allowed. Carrying out something so dangerous with so many spectators present, I mean. The government doing everything it can to promote new science technology at the moment. They're more worried about being ahead of the game than the odd spot of public safety infringements. If they can be the first to develop some new technology, it makes Britain more powerful in the future, you see. Yes, I suppose that's true. In a way. So, the powers uh, that be are placing a heavy emphasis on scientist right at the moment. What sort of rights? They're making it so that any theories the brains... The brains have... have uh, the brains have remained their legal property, as it were. Right uh, through the developing it into practical idea and even going into production. Which is the infuriation, um, uh, infuriating reason us coppers aren't allowed to touch this crime scene. Because a new, uh, high fault and special dispensation for a scientific equipment act forbids it. That act is gonna have something important to do with this case, I bet. I see now. The only people with permission to investigate here are from, uh, some brand new department at the yard. The Forensic Investigation Team, it's called. We've been re re relegated to keep in guard. The Forensic Investigation Team, that's new. 
That's where basically crime scene investigation would be in the U.S. Um, any old fool can see that this heap of scrap metal was a sham to begin with. But just because it says scientific equipment on the paperwork, we can't do a flaming thing with it. Poor Gregsy. He's very uh, head up, isn't he? Remind me again, what's this new legal act that means we're not allowed to touch the scene here? Are you having me at it, Sunshine? It's a special dispensation for Scientific Equipment Act. Hmm, yes. I think Hurley mentioned that recently, with a real twinkle in his eyes, I remember. I'm sure he did, your ladyship. I'm sure he did. Passed especially for this great exhibition it was. All scientists have to do is present their ideas or inventions to some suits in the civil service. And if it gets rubber stamped, that's a guarantee of rights to remain of the invention's confidentiality. What does that really mean? Think about it. Think of all the world-changing new inventions on display every day this exhibition. Although a good half of them are a load of cobblers, if you ask me, put forward by shammers like yourself. Thanks for that. Oh, I love how absurd some of the inventions here are. So, all so fun. It might be fun to you, but a member of the force has to be present at every single demonstration. Can you imagine, eh? Hang science, that's what I say. <laughs> oh, I don't think so. That sounds like my dream job. You'd soon think otherwise after spending a day guarding all these shammers' bogus contraptions. But if they're all bogus, how can anyone hope to demonstrate them? There'd be no point. Yeah, well... There is a point, sadly. Sorry? Thanks to another of our government's bright ideas. If any theory or invention is deemed to show potential, the government hands out a research grant. So scientists get funding. Exactly. And that's what they're all after. All these shammers coming from far and wide to clog up Hyde's Park. And who has to keep them all safe, eh? Who has to smile politely and welcome them? Us coppers, that's who. So you can see why I say it now, can't you? Hank Science, hang it. Oh. Maybe I can see your point. Apparently, Professor Hairbrain lives and works in Germany now, conducting his research. That's right. Came back to Britain, uh, especially for the Great Exhibition, as I understand it. Probably after one of the government's research grants, hmm. Actually, we learned something else about the professor earlier today. About his time in further education, it turns out he was at university with someone we both know. Lord Van Zeeks. Hey, what's that? That's news to me. But but if Van Zeeks mans a prosecution, then as the accused, the professor's fate is sealed because the Reaper will get him one way or another. Blimey, that man's beyond me. I don't know what goes on in the head of his. Talking of Van Zeeks, this morning's paper ran the story of him being attacked. Read that. Oh yes, but Mr. Reaper is completely fine. Nothing to worry about. Yes, right. Glad to hear it. Still, the Reaper, huh? How long that business gonna keep up, I wonder? The Mystery of the Reaper. The victim of this case, the investor Mr. Asman. He was another of the Reaper's victims, or so I heard. Lord Barrick Van Zeeks is a top-class prosecutor. But even he can't always push the right verdict through. Sometimes justice can't win. Yes, I've heard about jurors being bribed and evidence being falsified. And that's how the notion of the Reaper of the Bailey came about, isn't it? Well, you would know a lot about that, about evidence being falsified, Inspector. Especially after what you did in Case 5. Obviously, Scotland Yard suspected Van Zeeks initially. We all assumed he was taking matters into his own hands if he failed to seal the deal in court. Although the man himself denies the charge, well, we've done a very thorough investigation, and the conclusion we reached is that Lord Van Zeeks is in no way related to the deaths of those people outside the courtroom. It's the apprentice. There's no question in my mind. I stake my reputation on it. I would. But if that's true, then how do you explain it? All those defendants couldn't just have coincidentally died if nobody killed them. I know that, but I can't explain it. It's a mystery after all, isn't it? That's the whole point of the Reaper. Professor Hairbrains mentioned something else. He said that at university, Lord Van Zeeks was a totally different person, easygoing and kind. You what? He said that it was after they both graduated that something happened to change the man. 
Do you have any idea what it was? No clue. Really? Well, eventually we'll find out about that. Some people, I think, know what they're not saying. Look, I've got my hands full watching over this frustrating crime scene. Why don't you go and make a nuisance of yourself elsewhere, eh? What is that? There are all sorts of strange buildings here in the Great Exhibition Grounds, aren't there? I seem to remember something similar being exhibited in Japan one time. Oh, in your country, Runo. I do wish I could go and see it. I present a particularly steel, uh, steely samurai with a present of one of Hurley's stories I'd written especially. And see if I couldn't get Hurley into a jam against some uh, Bartitsu master ninjas. Um, you might not find as many of those sorts of people around as you think. Oh, well, that's dull. Oh, but I do know a prosecutor with a Chan a mage top knot I could introduce you to. A Chan Maj, really. Do you think I could have my picture taken with him, do you? Assuming he's recovered from the trim Kazuma gave him a year ago, yes. Yeah, they're talking about- I forget the prosecutor's name. Oh, we can look up. Um, that was in Japan. Um, the amazing horn shaped device is pointing towards the Crystal Tower. I suppose once people are disassembled by the machine, they're shot out of that thing to wherever they're going. I don't think it was supposed to shoot any anything, Runo. It was set up to beam people to the Crystal Tower, where they'd be reconstructed in the original form. Well, I don't like the look of it. If it was as amazing as it looks, the accident wouldn't have happened in the first place, of course. I suppose that's true, yes. But nothing ever goes according to plan, does it? Doesn't. And these balloons. So those are people carrying balloons, dangling silently in the skies over London. I always thought the day would come when humans would discover how to fly. But I never imagined it would involve them being suspended from colorful floating, uh, Temari hand ba balls. I'm sure it feels amazing, uh, being up there among the clouds. Let's take a ride together, Runo, please. If I'm being perfectly honest, I would like to try it. But without a cast iron guarantee that the thing won't plummet to the ground, I'm too scared. Oh well, in that case, I should tell you what Hurley said. It's physically impossible for a flying balloon to plummet to the ground as long as it doesn't explode. Yes, call me crazy, but I think the exploding part might play on my mind a little. Considering how badly damaged everything is, Professor Hairbrain was lucky to escape unscathed, I say. We should have a good look around the machine while we can, I think. Touch anything and I'll make sure I kill you before I get strung up myself, you hear? Okay, well calm down with the chips there, Inspector. I, I won't touch a thing, I promise. So please, spare a thought for your digestion. Anyway, do you really think this machine could actually disassemble people like the Professor claims? He asks, looking totally incredulous. Give it a rest, Sunshine. If we were allowed to examine all this bleeding scrap metal, maybe we could answer that question. But we can't, can we? Because of the annoying rules, you mean? Exactly, the annoying, obstructive, flaming rules. Oh, look at the base of the machine there. Oh yes, there's a tool of some kind poking through the wire um, uh, mesh. It's a screwdriver, I think. That's inside the machine? Oh, isn't it a lovely one? This, the handle is in the shape of a capital letter A. It is. Oh yes, you're right. What's the matter with you? Don't touch anything I said. Touch anything and I'll make sure I kill you before I get strung up myself, I said. Yes, yes, I understand. Sorry. I only touched it as a, a teeny weeny bit. But Gregsy, I'm very curious about this screwdriver. Uh, really very, very curious. Of course, your ladyship, you're so clever, your ladyship. Fancy putting something like this. The reason he's so nice to her for people that are wondering is because she writes stories about him, 
and it's popular, and so he gets he gets a raise and he gets more popularity because of it. He's scared if he says something rude to her, she's gonna write bad things about him. But I'm afraid I can't let you have it. Bruno found it first. I assure you, I'll investigate it thoroughly. He's gone off of it. Hmm, that was very mean, I'm afraid. Inspector Gregson is going to make a very clumsy and embarrassing mistake in next month's installment now. <laughs> oh man, so she's going to uh, she's gonna write something bad about him now. Poor Gregzy. I think we looked at everything that we could. Oh, there's this Ferris wheel in the background. What What is that gigantic thing over there? It looks like an enormous water wheel. Oh, that's a Ferris wheel. There will be people riding inside those little cabins you see. Why? Well, they rotate nice and slowly, so it's a wonderful way to see the surrounding scenery. Wait, it's turning? But it looks completely still. Yes, that's because it's turning so slowly. One complete revolution takes about half an hour. If you were mad enough to go in one, it would be uh, fun to whiz around fast, don't you think? I feel as though you might have just invented a new sort of ride there, Uno. Let's see if we can present um, uh, the inspector with this sketch. As a detective, what do you make of this? Personally speaking, 9 times out of 10 I find clues turn out to be red herrings. So there's every chance that's totally irrelevant. Well, it was a map of the, of the um, machine, but okay. That's actually a fairly persuasive argument. Okay, um... Inspector, have you read this paper? Yeah, two unwelcome blasts back-to-back. -back. This one at the exhibition and the Reaper getting attacked. I know. Terrible news to wake up to, wasn't it? I tried to pretend I hadn't read it and turned over for another 40 winks. Thanks to that, I was late up and got a roasting from the super. Some mornings are link are like that, aren't they? Okay, let's see where are we uh uh Hmm Did I get everything did I find everything that I possibly could here? Looks like it. I don't think there's anything that I really missed. Um... How do I go back, um, uh, downstairs? I don't know if I can. Um... Okay, so I guess I could just do that, um... Uh... Gina, would you take a look at... Oh, where where did it go? Hey, <laughs> hey, looking for this, Odo? When did she do that? I wonder if you've got anything else to show me, eh? What do you reckon? Give that pack first, please. Uh, what about the paper? Oh, it's the same thing again? Okay. I wonder if we can go into the tower, let's see. Um, for some reason, the ground is damaged in this spot. Look. Yeah, it is. Almost as if there was a fire here or something. Yes, if you look closely, there's some scattered ash and burnt embers, too. Well, I suppose there was a big explosion just above here. People probably wouldn't bat an eyelid at a small fire like this, um, like this would have been. I'm not sure we English are quite that laid back, Runo. What's this? That's a piece of the machine. Ah, it looks as though somebody dropped something behind a tree just here. Dropped, or hid. What is this? 
some part of the machine that exploded. Maybe. It could have fallen from the platform above in the blast, perhaps. What's going on here? Oh, nothing. I think I'll hang on to this just in case. A very curious device found behind a tree under the experimentation state at the exhibition grounds, almost as if it has been hidden there deliberately. Hmm. The Crystal Tower. It's certainly an apt name. It was built to be a focal point of the exhibition, and it definitely is, being so tall and with all that glass. I can't imagine a building like this ever being erected in Japan. There are lots of exhibits inside the tower as well, apparently. Of course, there's an observation deck, but there's also an art gallery, a zoo, and a museum. But I heard you have uh, to queue for three hours just to get through the doors. Well, at the moment, the shattered glass from the failed experiment may well be the biggest draw. And thanks to that accident, the whole tower is shut. Suddenly, it's not the crystal tower anymore, but the crystal glass shower. Apparently, everyone's taking to the skies now to look down on the disaster area from above instead. But there's a three-hour queue to go up in a balloon now. Londoners must be very patient people. Okay, so we can't get inside the, uh tower, but let's see. Wonder if we're able to get up in one of those balloons just to see what's going on. I've been meaning to ask you for a while now, but what are those funny round blobs floating in the sky? Oh, they're the flying balloons I've been talking about. I want to go up in one uh, soon. I've, I've read about situations like this in a magazine about strange phenomena. Creatures from outer space coming in round flying objects to attack Earth. <laughs> what? I, I I suppose inhabitants of uh, other planets are bound to be interested in the great great exhibition. This is it, Iris. It's happening. It's not. Don't worry. I'll explain it all to you later over a nice cup of tea, Runo. What is this thing? It looks like some type of bolt device, like you would... You would put something here and it would shoot almost like a crossbow. That's at least what it looks like to me. What is this thing? It's part of the machine, obviously. Some kind of crank here. Oh, um, wow, she pickpocketed that. Okay, well, I guess I can't show her that. Let's, um, see if we can show that to Inspector Gregson. I just hope he doesn't take it. Okay, he's not- he's not commenting on it. I wonder if we can ask the scientist about it. Oh, he's not here. Okay, um... What I do like is that, um, uh, they- in this game, they tell you where you're supposed to go. That's what I like, because in the old Ace Attorney games, you had, like, so many locations that you could visit, and you had to try to figure out exactly what you had to find, or, or who, who you had to present something to. Um, but it says, personally, I like to tinker around this place some more, so there's something we're not seeing here. Um... Um... I've shown her everything here. What is this? Oh look, what's this? Um, oh, wow, they said what I said. A ripped piece of cloth. Hmm, it's not like any fabric I've seen before. It's very thick and stiff. It looks extremely durable. It's canvas, I think, with some sort of rubber backing. And the edges appear to be a bit charred as well. Maybe that means it had something to do with the explosion. Let's make a note of it while Ginny's, um, uh, mid-yawn. Piece of green cloth, a torn piece of canvas-like material back of rubber that was found under the experimentation state at the exhibition grounds. There are scorch marks at the edges.
It looks like layers of thick canvas with a thick rubber lining of sorts. I've never seen anything like it before, but applying Mr. Sholmes' methods, you might deduce it was part of a raincoat worn by someone who really, really didn't want to get wet. And the charring must have occurred when the person was struck by lightning. Or blown up. Or maybe not. Okay, so I can't really present her anything, um, here. I've pretty much covered everything here that I can think of, um... Oh, that I didn't... That's where the co cove ended up after his instant kinesis, or whatever they call a dead, of course. And yet, they're calling the experiment a success. What's the wooden scaffold there for? The coppers, our lads, set that up after the incident happened. To get the body down, I think. Don't know, really. Didn't you help to erect that scaffold, then? Nah, lookout duty's more my thing. Wandering around the exhibition and keeping a lookout for fun stuff. Mind Gregson doesn't hear you saying that, or he'll give you the boot. It's incredible, though, isn't it? I mean, could the victim really have bridged that gap by some sort of invisible kinesis? Runo, Runo, listen. What? What? What is it? I've been thinking. Hurley might know something, M mightn't he? About what? About Mr. Reaper? About what happened to Lord Van Zeeks, you mean? Because it sounds like something very significant occurred after he graduated from university. Something that completely changed his life. Maybe, but I have no idea where to find Mr. Sholmes at the moment. He's in the middle of some big case, isn't he? Here, this is what you need. What's that? What's this, some kind of entrance ticket? Madam Tus Tusbells, is this supposed to mean something to me? You don't know it? It's the most popular attraction in London at the moment. It's very close to Baker Street, actually. We could go now if you like. No, no, no. We don't have time for visiting attractions today, Iris. We have big, a big trial tomorrow. But that's where Hurley is. What? At, at this popular London attraction? Yes. How is it that you know where he is? Hurley told me, but he told me to keep it a secret from you, Runo. Madam T Tuspels? I don't see how it, it could be related to the case we're investigating here, but then... Stranger things have happened, and when they happen, Mr. Sholmes is usually at the heart of them. Okay, let's go there then. Twenty second October, Madame uh, uh, Tuspels, uh, Tus Tuspels Museum of Waxworks. What the? Okay. What What is this place? Look at all these terrifying scenes, but why are they all people so still? Guillotines, ruthless murderers. I know what I'll be dreaming about tonight. They're all wax models. They're amazingly realistic, aren't they? What do you think, Runo? Shocked? Wax models? Ah! I I read about dead, dead, dead bodies in wax once in a magazine about strange phenomena. Depending on how co co corpses are kept after death, po parts of them can turn to wax, apparently. It's ca called a uh, ad the ad the adipocery. Stop talking about creepy things like that, Runo. You're scaring me. Anyway, adipocery doesn't form uh, readily. You know, it's only in ah. What now? I've I've just remembered something else I read in another ma magazine about strange phenomena. There was an old lady, maybe a wi witch who used to pour molten wax over co corpses and put them on display. None of the exhibitions in, in, exhibits in here are real. <laughs> what is he talking about right now? They're all entirely man-made replicas. They can't be. Do you really expect me to believe that? Just look at them. 
Oh. There's no way anybody can make models of people that are this realistic. And they're all such gruesome scenes. The one of uh, Sholmes is real. Wait. What is it? Oh, no. I must be seeing things. <laughs> what? What is this? Is this an arm? It looks like an arm, doesn't it? Maybe one of the Waxworks model has fallen over. You, you don't think it could be the work of one of the mass murderers in here, do you? Runo, stop scaring me. Is it a wax arm or a real one? Come on, you're always pointing that finger of yours in court. Poke that arm now and see how it feels. Objection. That big heavy curtain is in a very prominent position, isn't it? I have a nasty feeling there's going to be something truly terrifying uh, behind it. Oh yes, that's the famous Tuspel special exhibit. It depicts one of England's most notorious killers. Do you want to pay the extra fee and have a look? Pay more money to be even more terrified? Oh, let me think about that for a moment. It was only a suggestion. That's him. It's, it's... The great detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. Mr. Sholmes has his own wax statue in here, really? No, that's real. Well, he is world famous after all. It's an uncanny resemblance, isn't it? It makes my skin crawl to look at it. I know. But look, Runo, you can kick this Hurley and he doesn't move a muscle. You can't go around kicking the exhibits, Iris. Wait. It just moved, I'm sure. Not just a little bit either. Hmm, really? Did it? And look closely. There are, are beds of sweat on the face of this waxwork model. Yeah, that's really him. Shall we move on, Iris? Over there, look. There's a great murder scene to enjoy, much more appealing. Hold it. My dear fellow, I take exception to your recoiling in such a matter, as if you've seen something truly abhorrent. Mr. Mr. Sholmes. I knew it. Iris, what possessed you? I strictly forbade you from divulging my temporary waxwork secrets to Mr. Naruhodo. Temporary waxwork? What do you mean? And that kick, could you not have exercised a little more restraint? You winded me. <laughs> but Runo has something he needs to ask you. Ah, a question. And I thought you'd probably be uh, getting bored too. So here we are. Hmm. Well, I can't deny that your timing was impeccable. A mere two minutes uh, more being stationary like that, and my great brain upon which all my success has been built would have turned to wax. Thank goodness we arrived in time. Indeed, in many ways, the pair of you just saved the world from an unimaginable loss. Oh, Hurley, you do like to talk nonsense, don't you? Okay, let's ask him about the Reaper. He could know something is true. About Lord Van Zeeks and what happened in the past to change him. Now that you're here, let's take our time. How can I be of assistance? For your in luck, I'm suddenly quite taken with the idea of conversing. Oh, well, actually, I'm in quite a hurry. And if my eyes don't deceive me, I believe something is afoot within the walls of this very museum. A most fascinating case, if I'm not mistaken. Really. Moreover, I have a strong suspicion that it is related to the matter about which you've come to me now. But, how could it be? We shall speak again presently, my dear fellow. But for now, I must return to my work. What? Back to being a temporary waxwork exhibit? Madame Tuspels. What is this place? Madame Tuspels came to London from France three years ago, I understand. Since she opened this little waxwork museum last year, it's enjoyed great popularity in London. 
there are museums like this in Japan too, but these displays are something else. I mean, they aren't made from actual real people, are they? The extreme realism of these waxwork models is a particular secret of the Tuspels family, they say. They earned renown during the French Revolution for waxworks of victims of the guillotine. Okay. Yeah, during the French Revolution, a lot of people were victims of the guillotine. Um, uh, that's the device that, you know, has the blade that comes down on the person. Uh, really brutal. Uh, that sounds grim. The gruesome scenes were portrayed with such realism in the expressions of the faces of the condemned. Apparently, the sculptors would make the models directly from the corpses right th there at the site of the execution. At the... that really turns my stomach. That's just one of several legends about the Tuspels family. Whether there any tr there's any truth to it, I couldn't say. But anyway, this museum houses models of famous people from all over the globe. Nevertheless, the most popular art area of the museum by quite some margin is this House of Horrors. Ho house of... Uh, horrors? Of course, visitors' numbers are dwindling now as a result of the Great Exhibition. But people usually flock here to see exhibits at some of London's most vi vile criminals at their gruesome work. Naturally, most of the miscreants portrayed here were sent to the gallows. So they're even stiffer now than the models of them. Have you heard of poor taste? My dear fellows, the public live for poor taste. They yearn to be shocked. So the hideous ex exhibits in here are... They're all portrayals of real events that actually took place. Is it just me, or did the temperature in here just seem to drop? Anyway, I advise you to not think too deeply about what you see here. Oh, he's back to being a waxwork, is he? Temporary waxwork. The music is kind of creepy here, too. What do you mean by temporary waxwork, Mr. Sholmes? Exactly what you see. I'm part of the exhibits here, catching these criminals in the act. Catching them? Every half an hour, I home in on a different killer in one of the displays and adopt a new pose to ensnare him. When members of the public come for a closer look, I offer them my hand to shake. For a shilling, I'll happily allow them to take a photograph of us. Us, does he mean him and the waxwork murderers in here? But why, Mr. Sholmes? My dear fellow, isn't it obvious? For the money. He really roared at me there. Very fitting for the House of Horrors. As it stands, I may struggle to pay this month's rent, and I have the ra ravenous um, uh, iris to consider. Oh, Hurley. I'm so hungry. If push comes to shove, I shall have to ask you to do your bit, Mr. Narho. What's he threatening to uh, rope me into now? So, with that in mind, how about a photograph? As a special treat, you may have your pick of the murderers and scoundrels in here. The choice is yours. Maybe some other time. Hmm. Remember, Mr. Naruhoto, ignore me at your peril. Back to being a waxwork again. Is it just me, or did his final remark there sound a lot like a curse? Let's ask about the Reaper, because I'm curious. Hmm. Well, what is it you'd like to ask me, then? Um, actually, it's... It's about Lord Van Zeeks. Ah, our friend Mr. Reaper. How did you find him? Well, I trust... And so I feel Mr. Sholmes in about everything I'd learned. About Lord Van Zeeks, about Professor Harebrain, and about the strange coincidence that they had been at university together. So I'm wondering, what was it that happened to make Lord Van Zeeks such a different person? I was sure you'd know Hurley. You said there was something going on here in this exhibit hall before, that something was afoot, and that you believed it was related to what I wanted to ask you about. Um, Mr. Sholmes? He suddenly clammed up. Well, it seems we've reached the un- Greetings. Who's this? Oh, uh, hello? Where did she appear from? And what's she wearing? Could she look any more mysterious? I hope you are appreciating my museum. Sorry, have we... 
Mr. Shelms, do you know this? Oh, not again. <laughs> my apologies. I am Esmeralda Tuspels. This is my museum for waxwork. What? You... You're the Madam uh, Tuspels? Bien sûr. Though only 26 years young, I might add. Is that significant somehow? I'm a madam in name only. It adds a certain... J ne um, uh, says, uh, qui? That's French. I know that J means I in French, um, uh, but I don't know what the rest means there. Right. If anybody could translate what she said, let me know. Um. Firstly, I must apologize for my waxworks. Or rather, one waxwork in particular. That'll be Mr. Sholmes, then. I was led to believe he was a great detective, but he seems unable to settle. Next time you move from your designated exhibit, there will be a toil and trouble. Um, is she gonna throw that molten stuff at him? What? Um, she sounds deadly serious. That's a problem. How am I supposed to ask Mr. Jones about Lord Van Zeeks now? Let's not forget what Hurley said before. About something being afoot. Right here in the museum, I mean. Yes, I know, but... I'm so curious, I want to know what's happening here. Haven't we got enough on our plate already? The waxworks. Did you make all these waxworks, Madam Tuspels? I did. I am the third generation of waxwork artisans, you know. Gosh. It was my grandmother who began the tradition in my family. Her fortunes were checkered, living through the uh, turbulent times of the French Revolution as she did. Though that is when she acquired this avier fair that leads to the astonishing life-likeness. All these waxworks really do look as though they're alive. In fact, they look more alive than Hurley. Man. Heh <laughs> heh. What you see exhibited here represents the most atrocious of London's criminal past. All the waxworks were created in the presence of the real people on which they are modeled. In the hours immediately following their executions. That is the secret to the extraordinary lifelikeness. That sounds uh, terrifying. All walks of life have very similar challenges, I'm sure. To carry out one's uh, trade par excellence, one must go to extraordinary lengths. My exhibits are a reflection of society. I create only that which the public wishes to see. Ah, uh, why couldn't the public have wished for something less horrifying? Do not fear. Sorry? This room is the only uh, one in the museum with such a macabre theme. I do hope you will explore. There are models of famous singers, actors, politicians. Something for every taste, I hope. It was Iris who dragged me straight in here, come to think of it. Sorry, perhaps I should have eased you into things. The Great Detective Waxwork. Um, what's the situation with, uh, that... Ah, my temporary waxwork model. He approached me some days ago, you see, um, with a business proposal. Oh, what, what sort of proposal? My dear madam, what these sparse exhibits need is the addition of a world-famous great detective. Or words to that effect. Ha. Huh. Naturally, I am well aware that Mr. Sholmes is widely known in London as a talented detective. It's a great detective, actually. He's very specific about it. Yes, the creme de la creme. So I was keen to come to some arrangement with him, of course. But sadly, we were unable to agree terms. Let me guess, somebody uh, wanted to charge an exorbitant price for his services. For a mere 500 pounds, I will dive into your cauldron of wax this very moment. Uh, or words to that effect. Mr. Sholmes might have overdone it slightly with the sales pitch. Regrettably, the museum has a shortage of funds at the moment due to unforeseen circumstances. 
so he came to the current arrangement instead. Surely he doesn't really need to do what he's doing, though, does he? I would think not, but he was very insistent. I have a 50 uh, shilling problem that must be resolved by the morning. Or words to that effect. Or words to that effect. It's the pawnbroker, that's what it is. He must have, um, have something to redeem. Is the consulting detective work not going so well? Oh no, not this, um... I accidentally, um, I accidentally clicked on the wrong one here. Skip through this. Something afoot. That means it's something strange. Um, I wonder, could I ask you something? Bien sir. I'm just curious, is anything going on in the museum at the moment? Some kind of incident, perhaps? Whoever suggested such a thing to you? Oh well, it was your temporary waxwork over there who mentioned to me a little. Oh, he disappeared. A wax model is a work of art, not some tawdry, tawdry object for trade. Ah. Th there you are. Leaving the exhibit again uh, when you should be working. Do you wish to be melted down? <laughs> um, no, I'm good. My dear Madam Tuspill, save your rep reprimands. There are more pressing concerns. The wax can wait. It's our ideas about your current problem we must throw into the melting pot instead. Personally, I would advise you to not involve the police. Why ever not? She's turned as white as a sheep. Because you have at your disposal a great detective whose services you may employ for a mere 50 shillings. Though please be aware that I prefer... No, I insist upon payment in advance. Very well. Let us see if the great detective is able to live up to his name, shall we? Before I engage my analytical process, I must ask you to clarify something. What, pray, is behind the curtain? That is the Tusfell special exhibit. There is an extra charge to see it. Ah, the special exhibit in the House of Horrors. It must depict a special killer, then, I presume. Would you be so kind as to draw back the curtain, I wonder? Ah, ab absolument non. There is nothing amiss behind there. Nothing amiss, madam. What about the arm uh, protruding om ominously from under the curtain. Ah! I strongly encourage you to allow me to see what lies beyond before the situation worsens. Yes, very well. I will draw back the curtains, but only a soup con. What's going on here, exactly? I must confess, I peeked behind the curtain earlier. The Tuspel special exhibit is a very bleak graveyard scene in indeed. And yet somewhat surprisingly, the waxwork killer one would expect is nowhere to be seen. What does strike one, however? Is the portly gentleman lying peacefully in his back on the floor? Is that a real body? Well, well, then perhaps, Mr. Sholmes, that man on the floor is the ruthless killer himself. I'm afraid not, my dear fellow. He's a perfectly ordinary London gentleman, not even a waxwork, in fact. What? As skillfully made as these waxworks are, they are always distinguishable from real humans. So, allow me to present my two conclusions. 
The first is that a sizable business transaction has been taking place in this special exhibit. Why? Why would you say that? And the second is that the aforementioned transaction is linked to a serious crime. Ah. She looks as pale as candle wax. I, I don't understand. So, Madam Tuspells, as you've agreed to my feet, you shall now have the pleasure of seeing this famously great detective and temporary exhibit at work. The Great Deduction. The game is afoot. Waxworks. Fate. To begin with, we must ask ourselves what exactly is afoot here in this museum. The answer is revealed by the bundle of banknotes uh, pro protruding so help helpfully from your bag. In my estimation, some 200 pounds. That That is all my own money. So what does this large sum of money reveal? Ah, not as much as the involuntary glance you cast it, um, it would seem, Madam Tuspells. Yes, the answer lies where your eyes now fall. The significance of the 200 pounds is revealed by that public notice. Waxwork for sale. Your business has hit hard times, it would seem. In short, you sold the infamous killer to sender piece of your special exhibit for the sum of 200 pounds. No. Now, let us explore the next curiosity with which we are presented. Who is the portly gentleman stretched out so peacefully on the floor? It would appear the man has suffered a severe shock. The cause of which is clearly known to you. Ah. Unfortunately, madam, keeping secrets does not appear to be your forte. What dealt the man such a shocking blow is, of course, the 200 pounds. What? It would appear that you twisted this gentleman around your little finger most effectively. What are you suggesting? He rashly agreed to purchase the waxwork for the sum of 200 pounds. Only when he came to hand the money over did it occur to him what an extraordinary, uh, ex extortionate amount he was paying. But the money was no longer in his hands. And the result? The scene was uh, we see before us. He collapsed in shock. No, I don't think that's what happened. Yes, the killer in the special exhibit fetched a killer price. We can only pray that the gentleman's dreams are not plagued with regret. Sold for cash. Waxwork, um, location. The question that arises then is what has become of the waxwork that changed hands? Let us consider that problem for a moment. You, you cannot possibly. What immediately strikes me about this conundrum is a young man standing over there. Who is this fellow? To find the answer, we need only observe. His neck chief, such as worn by a policeman as a secret sign to fellow members of the force that a crime is being perpetrated. Yes, this young man is an undercover policeman, currently investigating this museum. I know him well, in fact. It's Sergeant John Clay. What are you talking about? The man's quite a celebrity. He received triple accolades at last year's policing awards. That's a wax figure, not a real person, but... Next, we turn our attention to the old man sat before him with this particularly unsightly visage. I've been watching closely and he hasn't moved a muscle, almost in fact, as if he were a waxwork. Ah, but, but, you. Your reaction only confirms my suspicions, madam. I noticed that once, of course. Observe. The telltale sign that instantly proves whether or not this old man is a waxwork is the obvious price tag. Through pence, a tragically low price, you might say. Through perhaps the going rate for aging waxworks riddled with cracks. And yet you sold it to the poorly gentleman for an exorbitant 200 pounds. The sort of plucky behavior that's sure to attract the attention of Scotland Yard. Isn't that so, madam? I-I do not. Yes, 
The waxwork you sold has already been seized by the police, and remains in their custody as we speak. The old man must be reunited with his grave in a special exhibit, and not a moment too soon. Okay, that, that, that theory is wrong. Discovered already. Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of this horrifying puzzle. Okay, let's try to deduct it ourselves now. Yeah, everybody's like, what the hell? Oh no. I see I've stunned you all into silence. You have, Hurley, you have. And you obviously upset this young lady in the process. Her cauldron looks awfully hot. Um, if I could just bring up one point, Mr. Sholmes. Ah, the notorious Naruhoto one point. I'm all ears, my dear fellow. According to your deduction, then, the special exhibit featured this old policeman. So, that would mean that he's the part particularly ruthless murderer, wouldn't it? The killer policeman, Otter Mall. Mole. Sorry? It was a mysterious series of murders that rattled the capital only last year. The police rushed to the scene every time, only to find the culprit had disappeared into the aether. And it turned out the culprit was a policeman himself, a senior officer by the name of Otter Mole. So you mean that that's who the sinister-looking old man there is supposed to be? Indeed. It is a particularly grim face, is it not? Un unforgettable, in fact. Yes, I remember that odious uh, uh, countenance only too well. But it is 200 pounds a lot of money for a wax model? It would be enough to afford one of the latest steam carriages if that puts things in perspective. So, it is quite a lot then. Is there anything else you wish to add? Before I melt you down? That bubbling wax is looking more and more uh, uh, ominous. Ah, uh, the smell of all that molten wax is starting to worry me. Mr. Sholmes did more or less just accuse her to her face, so... I think I might have to call on your assistance here, Iris, if that's alright. To make some minor corrections to the great detective's great deductions. Of course it's alright. We'll soon set things straight. Well, let's get started then, shall we? Before Madame Tuspels vents her anger. Just when I was waiting, uh, what I was waiting to hear, my dear fellow. So, Madame Tuspels, in accordance with our agreement, you shall now have the pleasure of seeing this famously great detective and temporary exhibit at work. Course correction, hold it, Mr. Sholmes. Okay, let's try to fix this now. To begin with, we must ask ourselves what exactly is afoot here in this museum. The answer is revealed by the bundle of banknotes pr protruding so helpfully from your bag. In my estimation, some 200 pounds. That is all my own money. So what does this large sum of money reveal? I'll just skip through this because we've read all this before. Okay, we've seen that we've uh, heard what he said here before. She definitely looked in this direction, it's true. But I'm not sure she'd sell any of her waxworks, even for 200 pounds. Oh. She must pour her heart and soul into making them, don't you think? Over and above the wax. If it were me, I wouldn't sell them for anything. For that much money, I would. But it sounds like that makes me a bad person. Well, anyway. I wonder if the 200 pounds could have something other significance. Let's follow the furtive um, glance again and see if there's anything else that could explain it. What reveals the two true significance of the 200 pounds? Note on the wall, what is this? What's that note doing pinned on the wall there? Oh yes, let's see. Dear Madam Atuspels, We've taken the prisoner from this room. The price for his safe return is 200 pounds. So basically, somebody's st stolen the wax figure. Have the money ready by noon on 23rd October. What? This, this is... It's just like the sort of thing that's left behind when someone is kidnapped. Yes, it's a ransom note. Exactly.
Take that! The significance of the 200 pounds revealed by the ransom note. Quite so, and we must congratulate these criminals on their inventiveness, abducting a waxwork. Ah. 200 pounds is no small ransom fee, yet you clearly intend to pay it. The model in question has special importance, so I put together all the money I have. In summary then, the 200 pounds you have in your handbag is ransom money. Now, let us explore the next curiosity which we are presented. Who is this portly gentleman stretched out so peacefully on the floor? It would appear the man has suffered a severe shock. The cause of which is clearly known to you. Ah. Unfortunately, madam, keeping secrets does not appear to be your forte. What dealt the man such a shocking blow is, of course, the 200 pounds now. So if the waxwork was kidnapped, where does that leave us in terms of who this man is? We could just ask him when he comes around. I think the point of this exercise is to understand the beauty of the deduction process, Iris. Yes, you're right, so the guy's knocked out, he's not dead. Hurley's trying so hard, we mustn't let him down. Well, there's little doubt that he suffered a shock. That much seems clear. But in that case, what's Madame Tuspel's trying to hide? Let's have a closer look around. What really left the poor gentleman stretched on the floor? What is this? This is just Madame Tuspel's right hand, isn't it? Yes, it must be. I can clearly see her left hand after all. Oh, but wait a minute. This is a left hand as well, look. Don't say such creepy things, Iris, please. And it seems very stiff too. In fact, it's really hard. You you mean it's made of wax. I'm gonna say this, she hit him with the hand? Take that! What dealt the man such a shocking blow is, of course, the waxwork hand. Indeed, with a solid waxwork limb, one could deliver a very substantial blow. How, how could you... The hand protruding from the bottom of your cape. It ought to be a right hand, but closer inspection reveals that in fact, it's a left hand. Ah. And somewhat masculine as well. In other words, it does not belong to you, madam. It's the hand of a waxwork model. Some of the visitors to my museum can be troublesome. They meddle with the exhibits and cause damage. So you mean that arm? Yes, this gentleman saw fit to try to remove it as a souvenir. Hmm, no small keepsake. Like taking a whole branch of a cherry tree when you go to view the blossoms. I'm afraid I had to teach the man a lesson. You confronted the man and tried to take the arm back. And the result, the scene we see before us, he was knocked unconscious. A point we may need to revisit later. But for the time being, we have our conclusion. Yes, the killer in this special exhibit has been kidnapped. Kidnapped. Solved. The question that arises then is what has become of the waxwork that changed hands? Let us consider that problem for a moment. You, you cannot possibly. What immediately strikes me about this conundrum is a young man standing over there. Who is this fellow? To find the answer, we need only observe his neckerchief. Okay, so this is wrong. According to Mr. Sholmes, the yellow neckerchief is a sign to other policemen that some crime is underway. A way of communicating with his colleagues without revealing his identity, yes. It's a secret that's closely guarded by Scotland Yard. 
that Mr. Shelms didn't hesitate to give away. Well, uncovering secrets isn't any true detective's nature, of course. Right. Anyway, judging from Madame Tuspell's reaction to Mr. Shelms' deduction, I think perhaps we might not have identified the man quite correctly. What reveals the identity of the- of the... man? Oh, here. What the? The man has a stub sticking out of his shoulder where his arm should be. Ah, uh, well that settles it, that then. Right, this isn't a real person at all. His entire arm's been ripped off from the shoulder down. His arm's been... Of course, that ties in with what we just found out. Take that! Who is this fellow? To find the answer, we need only observe. His shoulder stub. No such boneless human walks the earth, of that I can assure you. In other words, the man standing here, the young Sergeant Jean Clay, is in fact, defying all odds, a waxwork model. I seem to remember it was you who concluded he was a real person in the first place, Mr. Sholmes. He has become quite a celebrity in London, being the winner of no less than three policing awards last year. I simply had to make a model of the man. Naturally, what other explanation could there be? And it was this detective's arm that was pulled off by the man on the floor in the special exhibit, wasn't it? Next, we turn our attention to the old, uh, to the old man sat before him with a particular unsightly visage. I've been watching closely and he hasn't moved a muscle. Okay, we've seen this. killer policeman called Ottermole, was it? Was he well known? It was all over the papers last year, but I can't say I know what he looks like. It's a very low price, though. Through prints isn't much money. Only enough for a few measly hours of gas in Mr. Garadov's delightful lodgings, in fact. So this is the special killer taken from the special exhibit, is it? The waxwork that somebody stole from the museum and tried to ransom for 200 pounds? Is this crusty old killer policeman Ottermole really? Perhaps we should have a good look around again and see if another idea crops up. Is the old man at waxwork or a real human? Nope. Look at that twitch. Take that! That was easy. The telltale sign instantly proves whether or not this old man is a waxwork is the obvious twitch. Even the most realistic waxworks do not exhibit a twitch. I don't think any exhibit a twitch. In other words, this bended old man is in fact a genuine member of Scotland Yard. Slight shift in your choice of adjectives, then. And there you have it. Well, Madam Tuspells? Well, what? It was me who contacted the police and demanded that someone come in the first place. He is clearly fatigued. He is sound asleep. But then, what's this tag about showing a piece of... A, a price of three pe pence. No doubt the price tag of the muffler, which the old Bobby purchased recently at a local market. I don't think so. I presume you've observed the scarf tied around his arm. Does that not strike you, Mr. Naruhoto? Yes, the secret sign used by detectives to show that some criminal activity is currently underway. Of course. Because, as you know, there has been such criminal activity happening here. As you deduced from the very beginning, Detective. So, it would seem that we finally arrive at the truth. The waxwork of the specially ruthless killer from the special exhibit has been kidnapped. And Scotland Yard are already investigating. But the model's whereabouts remain a mystery. Oh no, wait. Wait a second. Don't tell me that it was a wax model inside the machine. Was it a wax model inside the machine? Maybe that's what happened. I, I was thinking about that now. Maybe that's what they used 
um, uh, the killer in the case used to put inside the machine. That's the guy didn't really get teleported. He really just was there at the tower and he died there. Still a mystery. Deduction complete. Elementary. All sorts of people visit my museum here. Men and women, young and old. Sometimes they drop in just for a short time on their way back from the pub. I welcome them all. But if anyone tries to damage my exhibits, I do not take it lightly. Anyway, Your great deduction was even more enchanting than I had been led to believe. It was a pleasure, my dear madam. I'm gr gratified that you enjoyed the spectacle. And as for your rough customer, I've no doubt he'll regain consciousness shortly and return home. What concerns me more is the waxwork from the special display, if it was indeed genuinely abducted. Yes, tragically it was. Then I would ask you to recount um, to us the events surrounding the um, the stolen waxwork. In as much detail as possible, if you please. Very well. But after I have told you what I know, I must insist that you return to your work. The talents of a great detective can be put to better uh, use, I feel, but as you wish. The stolen waxwork. Tell us more about the stolen waxwork, please. It was some days ago now, when I came in here one morning. I immediately noticed that a waxwork was missing from the special exhibit here. It is your most prominent display, so that's why the curtains were closed. And I found the ransom note in its place. The culprit must have broken in during the night and taken it then. So this waxwork that was stolen... It was a model of some horrible criminal, I suppose. Of a particularly horrible criminal, in fact. The killer who left a more profound scar in society than any other, I would say. The Professor. The Professor? Not a name I've heard of. So, Mr. Naruhoto, it seems the circle is complete. Sorry? The Professor case happened at around the time I was born, didn't it? Indeed it did, Iris. Ten years ago, a series of murders that rocked the capital. Ten years ago? Yes, at exactly the time that Barrack Van Zeeks graduated from university, in fact. What? Surely he's not saying... So the big event that changed Mr. Reaper's life... As you've surmised, it was a professor case. Who was this professor then? It was a series of gruesome murders that had all of London gripped in a terror a decade ago. After five victims were killed, the man was arrested and put to death. And now he's immortalized here in wax for all Londoners to admire and enjoy. Though of course, he happens to be absent at present, uh, on account of the abduction. But I don't understand. How is all this related to Lord Van Zeeks? You must first understand, my dear fellow, why it is the professor earned such infamy. It was due to the victims he chose, some of Whitehall's uh, finest. What do you mean, Hurley? Those murdered by the professor were some of the highest numbers of the British aristocracy. Members of the nobility, even royalty, it sent shockwaves through the country's um, uh, administration. Members of the... Ah, wait, of course, Bar Barrack Van Zeeks is an aristocrat as well. What Professor Harebrain said? Lord Van Zeeks is from a family of noble blood. Oh gosh. It was the fifth victim that led to the professor's arrest. 
The last of the killer's prey was a young noble by the name of... Clint Van Zeeks. No. I don't believe it. Van Zeeks? I'm sure you can piece together the rest for yourself. In the wake of his older brother's murder, the young Barrack um, pursued a career as a prosecutor, and eventually became the Reaper we know today. I had no idea Lord Van Zeeks had such a tragic past. Well, I'm afraid that's all I can say on the matter, for the time being at least. After all, I have work to do. As a waxwork exhibit. Okay, um... I'm, I'm afraid I shall have to excuse myself as well. Oh yes, of course. It's, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Well, none of the predicted scenarios I've been analyzing involved you coming to visit me here. It's been too long, it really has. I'm delighted to see you, Barrick. So the prosecutor is visiting the Professor Hairbrain. It's been ten years, and here we are, meeting in a prison of all places. I can't forgive myself for what happened to Mr. As Asman, I can't, just can't. I, I still can't believe it, it could happen. Tomorrow, the court will decide. Yes. I have a young Eastern man acting for my defense. He seems reliable enough, though. It, it was an accident, a terrible accident. He, he assures me he can prove it. I must warn you. Oh, I know, I know. I've heard already. You're going to be prosecuting, aren't you? Yes. Since I returned to England, I've heard lots of stories. Barrick, are you really... What? Never mind. I know that you have my best interests at heart. My friend is on trial. I wouldn't entrust it to anybody else. Of course, I fully understand. Thank you, Barrick. Until tomorrow, then. I'll see you in court. This is gonna be a very strange case. This is gonna be really strange. Um, because, um, uh, it seemed like Barrick wants Ryu to prove that, that the professor is innocent. Professor Hairbrain's a different professor. It's not the Professor Serial Killer. But, um, uh... That's gonna be strange, so he's gonna be prosecuting his friend. You know, this would never happen in real court. A prosecutor would never be involved in a case in somebody he knows. Um, uh, but this is very strange indeed. I'm really curious how the court's gonna be going, because I'm assuming next part will be court. So thank you guys for watching. This is a really interesting case coming up. Kind of weird with the machine. I know that's kind of cheesy at the beginning. But um, the case itself, like learning about Van Zeke's past and everything, that seems really interesting. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you do enjoy this series, please do drop a like, because it does help the series out a lot. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone.